Good morning. Welcome to the premium public video forecast discussion for Friday, May 31st, 2024. Of course, I'm your meteorologist, Stephen D. Martino, CDM number nine. And also, I just want to ask if you can, because it helps out the channel quite a bit, if you can like and share and uh, subscribe, as always, to the YouTube channel. But also, if you're interested in receiving this type of information, and analysis every day and also the ability to drop me emails and ask questions and i will of course be required to answer because i'd like to answer uh definitely check out the premium consulting membership you can see the link in the top there as it's only 15 dollars a month well worth it for all your meteorological needs and far more accurate than some silly app now with that being said Let's take a look at what is evolving here. As you know, we have been watching the development of our La Nina, and it is really starting to get its act together. Very nice here. Now, notice the warm waters out here. This is around Nino 4. Okay, now, the way they break up the Nino regions is they got 1 plus 2 out here, 3 is about here, 3.4, which is where we normally see all of our measurement of the strength of a La Nino or El Nino is right about here. And the reason why we use this area is because usually this is where you have your deepest waters and also where you have your most important forcing mechanisms in the atmosphere. We'll talk about that in a second. And then out here is four, okay? So, and this is our date line. So right about here is why we watch this area very carefully because remember what we talked about during the winter and the spring and in summer we talk about where is the convection forming in the tropical atlantic and tropical pacific the reason why we keep an eye on where this convection is setting up is because it starts to drive our forcing in the atmosphere so in the Pacific, we have a lot more influence. In the Atlantic, we focus that more in the summer because of the development of hurricanes and tropical storms. Now, in this evolution, I want to point out something that's probably standing out to you is that we have a very robust negative PDO signal. Now, a negative PDO means that you have cold water generally along the west coast here of North America and very warm water here in the central Pacific. And what this typically does is that it sets up the potential for your upper level lows to shift more towards the Gulf of Alaska. And you start getting this broad ridge starting to develop here over the Aleutians that you start to generally see. It, it's not a good idea to just go with a, a standard location of the troughs and ridges uh, from season to season. What I mean by that is that the wavelengths you see in the winter that you normally see with a lot of these demonstrations and, and examples for La Nina's and negative PDOs and whatnot cannot really be used in the summer because we have different wavelengths, right? So think of it this way. In the winter, you have big ridges and troughs. So the wavelength is a lot larger. But when you have the summer, think of it like using uh, one of those ropes when you're working out. When you're going faster, right with with that rope you get these little small little ridges and troughs well that's essentially what you start to get during the summer months you you don't get the same type of wavelength so you don't want to lock yourself into like any type of forecast or assumption in terms of the troughs and ridges but typically what you end up here with is the potential here for these troughs to end up in the gulf of alaska more and bleeding into the west coast you kind of get this trough around here and you also tend to get a ridge around here or at least an enhancement of a ridge here so you combine those two factors then you add in the warm atlantic and you can end up with a nice robust ridge here and while all that's happening your lending is developing and remember why when, when i pointed out the different regions and the fact that 3.4 is starting to cool, and this leads to a forcing of where your convection is setting up. And orientation is just as important as strength when you're studying a El Nino or La Nina. In this case, if you have your La Nina, let's not worry about too much about 1 plus 2, because this area is where you have your most shallow water, so you tend to have a lot of volatility involved here. But let's say right about here, 
okay you start focusing here around three if you get a lot of your coldest words focused here rather than here that leads to a higher potential for more convection to develop here which influences how your troughs and ridge axis is set up and amplify in the pacific which influences what happens in north america so what are we seeing this morning with our convection well notice we're seeing more of a focus here okay this is around nino 4 again here's our date line right about here and you're starting to see this convection setting up in this area notice under where we have the coldest waters it's getting suppressed pretty well why because the colder waters limits the amount of fuel for these tropical waves out here now remember this is all the intertropical convergence zone right here right it's the same a uh, convergence zone that we watch in the Atlantic for hurricanes and tropical storms, where during La Nina, typically it cuts short or really limits the development of tropical systems out here in the Eastern Pacific, which means you have less moisture driving up through Mexico and into the desert Southwest, but also means that you tend to see more tropical development starting to take shape out here. So this is a really big deal because as I was saying last week and I said in the discussion on Wednesday, if we get a lot of tropical systems coming up in this direction, you enhance the troughs out here, which leads to more of an enhanced trough around the Great Lakes. And also because of the stronger trough here amplifies the Western Atlantic Ridge and interesting problems evolve. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, but you can see how all the forcing mechanisms are evolving now note here we haven't looked at any models yet okay we're just looking at the observations and understanding what this means in the atmosphere and you can see this very nicely here in the upper level winds this is from earthnewschool.net uh this is the 250 millibar winds this is our subtropical jet stream it's still active but it's starting to lose some of its punch that we were seeing earlier on in the spring and we're also seeing that wavy polar jet stream now the good news for this weekend for our neck which is that this ridge axis is going to be building over the region when you have the trough axis off the coast like this you see how the winds are converging like this that means that the winds are converging in the upper levels the air cannot rise in this scenario the air must sink and when you have air sinking in this scenario it leads to a lot of dry air which means clear skies and wonderful weather conditions notice the polar jet stream here just has a lot of activity here a lot of troughs and ridges like i was saying earlier very wavy very active during La Nina's, your polar jet stream tends to be a bit more active and your subtropical jet stream really gets weakened and that's why when we talk about la ninas and influences on tropical systems here in the atlantic the importance of the subtropical jet stream is this if you have a lot of shear here then what you don't have the ability for tropical systems to develop right it limits it because tropical systems are moving this way and the upper level winds are moving this way as the subtropical jet stream wink weakens your low pressure systems, tropical low pressure systems, are able to develop and become more robust. Now, that doesn't mean you don't have shear at all during La Nina's. It just means that it is reduced. So with that reduction, it increases your potential for development. And so that is what we're watching here. We take a look at the water vapor satellite picture. There's our influence of the subtropical jet stream. Here is the influence of that convergence and confluence we're talking about setting up a beautiful weekend for much of the region through really much of the weekend until we get to about Sunday afternoon. And you can see in this subtropical jet stream, still strong short waves, but weaker. Meanwhile, take a look at the Atlantic here. You see this upper level low here? This really catches my eye. Now you might be saying, Stephen, why would this upper level low up towards the Northern and Northeastern Atlantic really catch your eye? the reason why is this we're seeing the support for more below normal heights here and here so as this goes forward you must have a balance between these two and that enhances the potential for our ridge here so what i'm saying here is that the observations are in the satellite data is pointing me to the potential for some interesting development 
as we move on through the season, as this whole pattern develops, as we continue to see the evolution of this pattern, because remember, we're just starting to feel the influences of La Nina. We're just starting to see how this is going to all evolve. And we're just starting to see their development of the Western Atlantic Ridge. And the overall summer forecast has been, and continues to be, that the first half of this month will be a bit volatile. Second half of the month, well, that looks like to be a bit more tropical. So when we take a look at the tropical Atlantic right now, hey, it is pretty quiet. Okay, there's nothing on the horizon developing. But what really catches my eye is the intratropical convergence zone here. It has a lot of convection. It has a lot of little short waves here, a lot of tropical waves. That's what we call them, tropical waves marching across the Atlantic. And once this feature gets to about here, and we get rid of some of this dust off the Sahara Desert. See that little faint kind of grayish view there? That's dust. Once we start getting rid of that, let's say after, let's see, June, most likely you're going to see a lot of focus out here if you see any type of development. When we get to July and August, we're going to have to really watch this area because it could lead to wave after wave of tropical low pressure system and not all of them are going to be hurricanes you'll have a tropical storm a tropical depression die out whatnot but very interesting scenario here playing out something that we're really going to watch and finally we get to the model guidance here we know what observations we're looking at now we start to study exactly how this is going to influence our weather pattern. And one thing that I'm really interested in is you see how this whole trough complex is evolving here. I think this might be a little bit of an error here. Um, but what I'm noticing is look at this ridge starting to build, starting to sustain itself. This is probably going to get displaced to the east a little bit. But you can see the falling heights here towards the Gulf of Alaska. Uh, you can see the bleeding in of that trough here. The subtropical jet stream uh, influences are not as robust. So this is mostly driven by the polar jet stream. When we take a look at the, um, the latest ensemble guidance, there is our signal starting to show up. And you're getting your trough axis in the polar jet stream pushed back to the west. And as we move this forward... You could see there's our trough axis right here. Here's our Western Atlantic Ridge out here. When you're on this type of a setup here through the middle of the month, this allows for cold fronts to push push back into the region, but you get a lot of showers and you get a lot of cold fronts storming out all around the coastal waters while this ridge is building. Keep an eye on this feature expanding into the Gulf of Alaska more and more of a troughiness over the west coast here more of a ridge out here that's going to set up a trough axis right around here and that sets up a southwesterly flow here again through the middle of this month early june to the 15th june 1st tomorrow through the 15th june 1st again tomorrow is the start of meteorological summer so really the first meteorological summer of the weekend uh, this is going to set up the first half of June as being unsettled, a bit on the cool side. Uh, but as we move forward through the month, uh, one of the things that's going to be very interesting is exactly where that trough axis sets up and how on our side of that trough axis, on the eastern side of that trough axis, we're going to be more in that southwesterly flow, which is something I think we're going to be experiencing more. Uh, and, and something that the ensembles are showing uh, for this upcoming week to feature temperatures a bit muggy uh, with uh, temperatures in the 80s, possibly touching 90 degrees, depending on the position of this trough and, and the cold front passage for next week. But for now, it's absolutely beautiful. We have temperatures ranging from the mid to upper 50s over the northern interior, lower to mid 60s along the coast, tranquil conditions, winds coming in from the northwest, low humidity, and plenty of sunny skies on the weather tap radar and surface map. Not much going on. High pressure and control. On our current visible satellite picture, hey, it is beautiful out there. On the infrared satellite picture, 
Our next short wave is out here. That's going to be approaching by Sunday evening with the potential for showers. Now, the European guidance is a little bit too robust here. But last time, the European was aggressive and the other models were backing off. And the European ended up being right, producing almost an inch of rain around here. Okay, that was a couple, a couple of nights ago. So what I did is I, I kind of took a little bit of a middle ground based on what we experience, what the ensembles and the AI guidance is showing, and kind of mix this forecast. So the forecast I'm going to be sharing is not a verbatim on any one model guidance, but more of a mixture of everything together combined with the experience of this pattern so far. So I like the idea of a stronger short wave marching its way through on Sunday night and a Monday morning. Uh, up to that point, look, we have a ridge axis. It's going to be absolutely beautiful, quiet. Hey, look, get out there and enjoy the weather. Uh, but on Sunday evening, the short wave is going to come in. I think we have more widespread showers. We could see an embedded thunderstorm here and there. Nothing severe, but that could boost some of your rainfall totals. And the reason why is that you have your precipital water values really nicely amped here, showing up on the guidance. So we got a little bit of a mix of maybe a little bit of convective feedback on, on the European uh, operational. The AI European backed that off a little bit, but not to the extent where the GFS is, which is basically almost nothing. So I kind of took the middle ground and said, okay, about a quarter of an inch of rain, possible Saturday, Saturday uh, Sunday night, maybe pushing up to a half an inch in a few locations and we'll go from there. Whereas the uh, operational guidance was going uh, with some spots up to an inch of rain. We're going to keep that out of there until we get a better idea on the convective nature on Sunday night and Monday. And then for next week, the question really comes down to just how far east does this trough axis actually get? Because the way this is setting up is that we're in between the upper level low, which is set up over the Western Atlantic, and the upper level low setting up over the Great Lakes. So depending on the location of these troughs and ridges, uh, what you could end up with is the cold front stalled out over the region and you end up being much cooler, more in the uh, upper 70s to lower 80s. But if the cold front remains off to the west, which I think is going to happen right now, then you're going to be in those muggy conditions. And as you can see with the 850 millibar temperatures here, you can see that influence of some of that maritime air trying to push in, the polar air trying to push in, kind of an occluded front somewhere around here. But if this ends up further to the west, more like out here, because this upper level low is a little bit further out, then you're ending up with temperatures in the 80s and possibly even 90s as you head towards the end of the week. And I'm leaning more towards that scenario right now based on what I'm seeing here uh, in the overall pattern evolution and what we've seen with this pattern overall. So let's dive into the forecast. For today, absolutely beautiful. Look for high temperatures in the upper 60s to lower 70s over the northern interior, lower to mid 70s along the coast. For tonight into tomorrow morning, high pressure remains in control with low temperatures, a bit chilly in the upper 40s to lower 50s over the northern interior, lower to mid 50s along the coast. For tomorrow afternoon, sunny, beautiful, excellent. Get out there and enjoy it with high temperatures in the mid to upper 70s over the northern interior, upper 70s to lower 80s along the coast, lower to mid 80s in the Delaware River Valley. For Sunday, increasing clouds, but we're going to hold off the rain for much of the day. Look for low temperatures in the upper 50s. High temperatures will range from the lower to mid 70s over the interior and along the coast, upper 70s to lower 80s in the Delaware River Valley. On Sunday evening, clouds increase, rain begins to invade, May, rain moves through Sunday night into Monday morning. Most of this rain will be falling when you're sleeping, okay? So by the time you wake up in the morning, getting ready for the rush hour on Monday morning, you'll have a few lingering showers, especially along the coast, with temperatures ranging from the mid to upper 50s for lows. On Monday afternoon, a few lingering showers along the coast, a mix of sun and clouds over the interior. Look for high temperatures ranging from the mid to upper 70s over the interior, lower to mid 80s along the coast. On Tuesday, 
Sky Cloud Cover. We're going to have a little weak trough here, so it could produce a nice late shower. But other than that, pretty nice with low temperatures in the upper 50s to lower 60s. High temperatures in the lower to mid 80s along the coast, mid to upper 80s away from the coast. Wednesday, that cold front approaches. Now, again, the setup here will be dependent on exactly how far west does this front get? I'm sure, say, so how far east does this front get? In the location of this high pressure system if you have your high pressure system stationed here you get more of a easterly wind so you end up with cooler conditions if the high pressure system is more located out here then you end up with more of a southwesterly wind so with that being the case i'm looking at wednesday rain temperatures ranging from the mid to upper 60s for lows high temperatures range from the upper 70s to lower to mid 80s on long island mid to upper 80s along the coast mid to upper 80s over the interior upper 80s to lower 90s in the delaware river valley the high temperatures for wednesday thursday and friday will strongly depend on the exact location of the high over the atlantic and this cold front boundary to the west of us if it shifts a little bit further east, then these temperatures will be cooler because you have more of an onshore flow. So on Thursday, southwesterly wind, variable cloud cover, scattered showers and thunderstorms. Look how far east this, this is coming. Other guidance has this further west. So we're going to go with scattered showers and thunderstorms, muggy conditions. Look for low temperatures ranging from the upper 60s to lower 70s. High temperatures range from the upper 70s to mid 80s on Long Island, mid to upper 80s along the coast, upper 80s over the interior, and lower 90s in the Delaware River Valley. On Friday, again, that frontal boundary is stalled out over the region. Scattered showers and thunderstorms will be a threat. Again, the location of this frontal boundary will be key in the temperature forecast, but certainly going to be unsolved for the end of the week with low temperatures in the upper 60s to lower 70s and high temperatures ranging from the upper 70s to mid 80s on Long Island, mid to upper 80s along the coast, upper 80s to lower 90s over the interior and lower to mid 90s in the Delaware River Valley. Again, much cooler conditions if this frontal boundary is a little bit further east and you get more of an onshore flow like what this depiction is showing but if this is further west then the high temperatures will definitely get into the 80s and 90s and you get muggy conditions so a bit of volatility towards the end of next week that is your premium video forecast premium public video forecast discussion for today have a wonderful weekend and as always stay safe out there